Desiderata by Er by Max Ehrman. Go placidly amid the noise and the haste, and remember what peace there may be in silence. As far as possible, without surrender, be on good terms with all persons. Speak your truth quietly and clearly, and listen to others, even the dull and the ignorant. They too have their story. Avoid loud and aggressive persons. They are vexations to the spirit. If you compare yourself to others, you may become vain and bitter. For always there will be greater and lesser persons than yourself. Enjoy your achievements as well as your plans. Keep interested in your own career. However humble, it is a real possession in the changing fortunes of time. Exercise caution in your business affairs, for the world is full of trickery. But let not this blind you to what virtue there is. Many persons strive for high ideals, and everywhere life is full of heroism. Be yourself, especially do not feign affection, neither be cynical about love, for in the face of all aridity and disenchantment, it is as perennial as the grass. Take kindly of the counsel of the years, gracefully surrendering the things of youth. Nurture strength of spirit, to shield you in sudden misfortune. But do not distress yourself with dark imaginings. Many fears are born of fatigue and loneliness. Beyond a wholesome discipline, be gentle with yourself. You are a child of the universe no less than the trees and the stars. You have a right to be here, and whether or not it is clear to you, no doubt the universe is unfolding as it should. Therefore, be at peace with God. Whatever you conceive him to be, and whatever your labors and aspirations in the noisy confusion of life, Keep peace in your soul with all its sham, drudgery, and broken dreams. It is still a beautiful world. Be cheerful. Strive to be happy. Welcome, welcome back to my channel, my beautiful family. This is your girl, Miss Beth, with another video. Thank you all for your support. Thank you, thank you so much for your comments. Thank you for liking the videos and sharing out the videos. Welcome to all my new subscribers. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, I haven't gained any new members in a while um, since Trending Live, but I want to thank you, my members. Um, Thank you so, so much for the extra support that you show the Miss Bev's Productions channel. Today I'm here and I recited that poem for you and I hope it was soothing enough, but it was also strong enough to have you understand that this poem is a poem for life. Um, if you listen to it carefully, if you can go research it yourself, it's Desiderata. And it is written by Max Ehrman in 1927. And the words there, um, a lot of it, apply to yourselves, guys. Apply it to yourselves. And you're going to see how much different you're going to view life. A lot of us, we take on life as a, as a, as a, as a doom and gloom situation. We, we, we take on life and even religion as... Everything has to be so rigid 
that there's no laughter, no fun, and no nothing. Guys, life has to have a balance. So let us make sure that we're doing that. Let us make sure you avoid things that create that stress on your life. Avoid them. I don't care what it is. Avoid it. That is what going, is going to reduce the loudness, the bitterness, the chaos, and the confusion. So please, listen to the poem, and you go read it yourself, and dissect it yourself, and understand it yourselves. Today I want to talk to teachers as we get ready to go back to school. Some schools have been opened already. Some schools will be opening by next week. I think all schools will be on point. Everybody will be out and up and running. And I just want to remind our teachers that as you get ready to go back, please remember that a degree is great, but a degree coupled with common sense is the greatest, is the greatest in any profession, in any in any walks of life. Common sense is a good thing. A lot of times as teachers we think that, oh, this is a curriculum and this is what they want me to teach. And we throw common sense out the door and then we struggle all year, we are bitter, we are confused because we're just not using our common senses to evaluate situations and to look at what makes sense. A lot of times the curriculum doesn't make sense. Why doesn't it make sense? Yes, the words are eloquently written or, or, or you know, are, are so nicely written, but sometimes it's not fit for the population that we need to um, divulge it to. So let us use common sense to learn to break things down, to learn to um, omit some things, to learn to build foundations, to learn to to put ourselves in situations and, and say, well, what if? And so that we are not just pushing a square peg in a circle, but we are evaluating and we are making it make sense to the young minds that we are trying to believe in so they can become achievers. Remember, every child is filled with greatness. Walk in your classroom as a parent, if you're a parent. Walk in the classroom understanding that the children are growing up. They're changing, they're developing, and there are different aspects of their developmental stages. So please do not go in and think that one size is going to fit all these children. Please go in and understand. Please go in and understand their economical situations that many of us who have taught in the urban setting that the, the, the challenges are real, the, the, the needs are great, and we cannot just walk in there with a curriculum written by people of status and, and, and it's all about money for them. Let us walk and remember, remember that many kids are coming in hungry. Many kids are coming in, coming out of a house that has been so chaotic and and disruptive and disrespectful and mean-spirited and so they're not coming understanding kindness and love they're coming out of homes where there's no support and they are just struggling on their own so as we think about these things let us remember that in order for it to make sense we have to understand their situations please remember that last year before the school year ends these are the kids you're getting this year in your classes which the teachers complain so much about that you're so running the hallways cussing the f word the b word <sighs> just remember i'm just asking you to remember don't come in with all these nice fancy things and setting up a beautiful classroom and then expect angels to walk into the classroom Please remember who you saw running the horse last year. Please remember, and as you are out there, you're starting the year off, please do not start it with unrealistic expectations, but start it understanding it's gonna be tough, and I have to put on my big girl's underwear and just step out there and just do what needs to be done. Remember, kids are going to be fresh. They're going to test you, but remember, Tit for tat doesn't work. Learn to have those good comebacks.
that you can just shut them down quickly. Do not ever argue with a student because believe me, guys, they will embarrass you. They will say things to you that you that that will, will just knock you off your feet. And remember, their little buddies, their little groups are not there to support you. They're there to empower their little friends with the fresh mouth. So don't sit there and toe to toe with them. Don't tit for tat, don't do that. Please don't, I'm telling you from experience. Don't tit for tat. They will run you raggedly, ragged and they will embarrass the life out of you. And then what are you going to do? There's nothing to do. I tell you the story of a little boy when I was teaching math to a group of Hispanic kids. And I'm in there, I have bought a documentary reader because the language and the, the, the low, the kids who are performing so low below their grade, this is how I differentiate my lessons using the document reader. Expensive, but it works. And so I put the work up, I went through the vocabulary, I broke it down for them, I did the connections, I did the examples for them, I gave them all the steps that they need to be successful with the examples. They're supposed to have it written in their notebooks, questions, we ask questions, and now I release a problem for them to try so I could see if they understood so now they could work independently. I am waiting, I'm giving them time, five minutes to get things done. Notice a little boy didn't do anything, he just sat there. He just sat there and he's sat sitting there and I'm standing there and he's just looking at me, just looking at me. And he just sat there. And then when he got ready, he said, Miss Summer Black, and I said, yes. So why are you so black? What was I going to do? Argue with him? I'm black. But my question to him was, why can't you do the work? Why can't you learn? The kids stopped working and they stood there and I said, I can change my blackness, my kid, but you can change your, 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 your level of learning. You can learn, right? So don't sit and worry about the thing I, you cannot change or I cannot change. Worry about the things you can change. And the kids just was like, mm, mm, Miss Sam Black, you told him. So you have to find ways, guys, to have a good comeback at the kids, but make it into something they can learn from. Don't sit there and get flustered and feel embarrassed and ashamed because they tell you something, you know, why you're so black. Yes, I'm black. You know, another kid was upset with her with one of our classmates because the classmate called me a uh, uh, in fat um, bitch. And I said, please, could you put educated in there somewhere? <laughs> and, and, and the friend, the little girl shut up because they, what was she going to say? She realized I wasn't offended by the, 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 the effing and the bitch word or the fat. But her friend was upset because she called me fat. She wasn't even upset about the effing and the bitch, she said. She called you fat. That's so disrespectful. I said, but I'm fat, am I not? I said, I'm not, I'm not embarrassed, I'm not afraid for somebody to call me fat. Because I am a fat woman. You know, I said, maybe I have enough to eat, I don't know, but I'm a fat woman. I cannot be angry if somebody tells me what they see. But she didn't understand it and she was still upset. But I'm just saying, guys, those are the realities. If you're black, don't be offended if the kids call you black. You're black. Embrace it. Let them see that you embrace who you are and you're proud of who you are. But then turn it around and then say, listen, yes, I might be black, I might be fat, but you know what I do? I have an education and I can, I, I can I make, I make a salary every month or every two weeks. Now, you are brown and you are skinny. What are you doing to make sure that when you get to my age, if you do get here, you are going to be self-sufficient? That's what you should worry about. So use these moments as learning moments. Have tough talks with your children. Don't sit there and, oh my God, look at them. And you whisper it to your colleagues and you talk badly about them. But you're not telling them that they're not preparing themselves to be productive in society. Talk to them. Give them the tough talks. Let them know that their attitude towards their, their learning 
is, is not the right attitude. Society is not out there to wait, waiting to welcome them and to give them handouts. Every four years there's an election wherever I am in Jamaica now, so I am just hoping, you know. But people, if you look at the YouTube videos and see the needs of so many, you see the degradation, you see the level of poverty. It should tell us, guys, that nobody's out there waiting to pick up your problems. Thank God for the YouTubers who are willing to to see that you need a mattress to sleep on, to see that a ceiling over your head is torn down and is willing to put it up. But the government is not waiting to give to you. You have to be self-sufficient. And sometimes, like the, the, the YouTubers who are doing these charities and, and giving back, sometimes we need to stop and say, what opportunities were there for these people? What have they done with what they had? Was it spent in the rum bars? Was it spent galling out? They have the wife, but they pick up all sorts of other girlfriends and wasted what they have, and now they have nothing. Sometimes we need to start doing some research before we start talking about, oh, well, the blessings of kitchen, we want to feed so many people and we want to cook two meals a day. The thought just came to me as I'm speaking to you right now because a lot of people were in good places. And they worked their money and they squandered it out. And now they're sitting in the old age having nothing. And people have to be picking up their responsibilities. We have women who have children. They have one, then they got two. And they said it was a mistake. The guy for the first one didn't stay. For whatever reason, they didn't stay. And then they go back to another man to get another one. And at no point they say, you know what, let me get some birth control. Let me lock my legs. You don't have to go out and, and get involved to bring babies. The one thing that brings babies is when you open your legs. So we don't have to go out there and do that. If you have two and it's a struggle, why are you going to open your legs again without protection? I have three, four, five. And then you, oh, we're not and on the floor and, on, and, you're, and all of this now and expect people to pick up your responsibilities. We have to think, guys. We have to think. So as educators, as you head out, this week, or if you did already, or you do it next week, then please head out with the right mindset, understanding that none of the children that you're teaching are angels. None of them are, are you know, are going to, to, to just come and, and, and make it easy. They're all coming with something, some challenges. Even the best of our children sometimes do get disrespectful. And they might learn to say, I'm sorry, but words spoken, they're gone. They can't be taken back. So no amount of, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, is going to fix anything. Um, because people remember how they feel. That's what people remember, you know. It's not about, oh, I forgive you. Yes, you forgive. But remember the feeling. You always remember how things make you feel. When you get a nice gift, you remember how it makes you feel good inside. When somebody does something nice for you, you remember the goodness. So it's the same thing, guys. When people do bad to you, you have that feeling. Don't tell people oh, to forgive, forgive, forgive. Oh, they're not forgiving. No, no, no. It's the feeling that stays. It's not that you haven't forgiven. Yes, you're forgiven. You're not angry. You're not bitter. But the feeling, just that good feeling stays. Don't expect the bad feelings to disappear. Good feeling stays. Bad feelings are going to stay. It's just that you, you, you graduate to the point where you don't let it let it uh, make you angry, but you continue onward and upward always. So that's my talk for this morning, guys. I didn't expect to talk this long, but I just need to just encourage our teachers and encourage the parents to make sure that you're working with the teachers. Don't send these children out there with the negatives, with so much negatives. We know the struggles are real for you, but you can be better parents if you choose to be better parents. You don't have to give kids gifts to be better parents. Conversations with your children. Good conversations with your children. Listen to them. When they're playing, listen to their, be their behaviors. Watch how they treat other people's children or how they treat people around them. All those things, parents, are things that you need to observe and rope it in. Encourage positive behaviors 
rope in the bad behaviors and guide them. Children don't know everything, so we have to make it make sense to them. We have to make them understand why they should be respectful, why they should be kind, why they should be confident in who they are, why they should believe in themselves so they should, can become achievers. All right? So remember, it's not a one-way street. It's everybody working together as a team and to make things happen. All right? Remember the father who had his three sons, and he called them to him one day, and when they came to him, he said to them, he gave each of them a stick, and he says, break it. And quickly, wow, they broke the stick. Broke it, right? It's one. And then he gave them a bundle of sticks. And he said, now break that. And try as they might. It was very hard to break that bundle, right? So the one stick was easy to break. When you're working by yourself, when you are not... Um, you isolate yourself and you, 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 you live in the misery, you are not supportive and you're not, you, you're just thinking, no master, me not, me not do this, me not do that, me not want nobody to do this, me not want nobody around me, me not want nobody, me not want nobody. It is a tough way to live. <laughs> but unity is strength. United, when it becomes a bundle, then it is more powerful. It's harder to just break. So, you work in your teams, encourage support, show support, and so that you are not by yourself. Because no one is an island. You No one stands alone. Whether it's a relationship at home, you're not by yourself. You're a team. Work together. You have children. Work together. You're in a workplace. Work together. You're in a church. Work together, people. Don't pull apart and just criticize and criticize. Work together and build because unity is strength. And when, we, when we're united, we get so much more done. So teachers, work together. Sixth grade teachers, you can work with the fifth grade and fourth grade and third grade teachers. If you're in that setting, if you're in a middle school setting, sixth, seventh, eighth, collaborate. Talk about what's going on. Get ideas. Don't be selfish, teachers. Sometimes can be so selfish. They don't want people to, they don't share their ideas. They don't, because they feel like, oh, they're going to take my ideas. And, and one of the things, so the teachers who take our ideas, they will come and see you do something and they run with it. And, and I remembered I was at a, at a space for the summer one year and I had to teach math and science for fifth grade. And the, the, the young lady who was here, she was a part professional, became a teacher. Kudos to them who graduated themselves up. And I went in and, I, and I, we were doing a project. It was just the start for the week. And, and I shared an idea with her as to how I was going to use words in the classroom and how I was going to, um, for the science lessons, what I was going to do. And listen to me, people. I'm telling you this. I swear to you. I'm not lying to you. The lady... I gave her the idea and in 10 minutes we picked up the kids and I'm going into my room and she was going in and the principal walked down the hall and you know that when I gave her the idea she went into her room the morning and she created the whole thing and 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 had the kids and when the principal walked through you know what she said telling the principal come look and see what I'm doing with my kids come look and see what I'm doing with my kids and, and I stopped for a moment and realized that the exact thing that I just said to the girl is what she did and was selling it to the principal as if it was her idea. Well, you know, for me, it didn't last long in that space because there was so, it was a charter school, but there were so insecurities in that place. There were so many situations where you would have been vulnerable if somebody walked in with a weapon and decided to hurt teachers and children. It was such an open invitation for, for all sorts of, of things. Classrooms having two doorways, sometimes three doors because there's a, a storeroom behind the teacher's desk. And none of those has locks on them. 
They were just wide open. So you are in the classroom here. You have a door you come in, but there's another door that the kids can exit through. Where are the keys of these doors? No keys. So if somebody walks in, you can't even lock the kids away. It's so much glass that there's no way you could hide the kids and so the intruder would see, would think there, there are no kids inside there. So I looked at it and then a little boy just was such an angry little boy. Like, And, and again, we know, I don't care how much we talk about, um, I'm not prejudiced, I'm not prejudiced. I love old people, I love old lies. I saw in that school where the lighter the complexion of the child, the more they get away with God with things. The darker the complexion of these children is the more people are quick to persecute them. And worse if the parents are not parents who can put in nice little things in the hair and, and, and do all these other things. And, you know, it, it is, prejudice is real, guys. It is real. And the little boy jumped out of his seat one day. A little brown boy jumped out of his seat. And the little kid was sitting in the front and the, the boy was disrupting. And the kid said, I want to learn. I want to learn. Could you just stop? And the boy got in such a rage and left his seat and came to the front. And I'm standing here teaching. And he came up to the front and grabbed the little boy around his throat, threw him on the ground. And when I got him, I had to really just, I was so frustrated, you know. Because when I reached out, I said, I told you guys someday, one, you need a phone in the classrooms. You have a phone that doesn't work. You need a list, you need a directory. They had no directory. So when this happened, I need to call security. Who do I call? Phone isn't working. There's no number up there. I'm new in the building. I was working just for the summer. And I'm saying, what the heck? This kid could have almost choked somebody's kid out. And there's no support. Finally, when I called next door to the teacher and said, could you call somebody to get here? The behavior tech came. And of course, they took the little boy and they walked with him. Five minutes brought him back to the room. They didn't even investigate to see how the other little boy was doing. Never called his mother. Nothing. But the other little boy got to come back. You know, and... But I said, no, 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 not in this room. You take him somewhere and go talk to him about his behavior. Because what he's doing is, is wrong. He's going to hurt somebody's child. Got home the evening, called the mother for the little boy who got choked so bad and thrown on the ground. And she's sharing with me so many. She says, I've been in that school so many times to talk to them about what kids were doing to my son. She said, last winter they took his coat and pushed him out in the snow. And I've been to I said, when are you going to stop talking? You are the advocate for your child. Talk sometimes has to stop and actions take, take effect. And I'm just saying, guys, you know, I'm just as a teacher, I'm a teacher at heart. And I, I just, you know, I see it and I know. And I'm just saying to you as teachers, as you go, you're servants. Remember that you're servants. You're doing a service to a community. You're a public servant. Please be the best public servant you can be. Go back and listen to Desiderata. Read it for yourselves and, and, and analyze it at your educational level. Just read it and analyze it and use that as your guide. And at this point, I will say, guys, just be good to yourselves. Be the best you you can be. Embrace who you are. Whether you're black, whether you're white, whether you're fat, whether you're skinny, whether you have long hair or short hair, gray hair, or red hair. Embrace who you are. Don't let people determine your worth. You put a worth on yourself. And so that you can continue onward and upward always. Take care.